Hello, this is Ronnie, and uh, we're here talking about raw vegan diet and raw food diet. The what I believe, what those of us who do this believe is the best diet for human beings, the healthiest diet, the diet that will quickest, fastest way of getting you the results you want in terms of uh, better health performance, and it really just makes sense, you know. But um, today I want to talk about reasons that people fail on a raw food diet or can't keep it going or just want to stop doing it and I want to deal with the idea that people stop doing a raw food diet because of nutritional deficiency and that nutritional deficiency is why people maybe have cravings to eat other things or can't keep the diet going or want to incorporate other things into their diet and my opinion briefly is that that's Never the reason that people stop doing a raw food diet. Never the reason. Um, basically never the reason. Although, we'll, we'll, we'll go into what we really mean by that. And uh, the reason that this is interesting to me is that for a lot of people that's something they might think, that they're missing something. Like, why is this not working for me? Am I missing something? What is it? And uh, it's uh, and it makes people go towards taking a lot of supplements, eating a lot of unusual foods, superfoods, trying to eat, trying to eat in very strange ways, and, and trying to fix some kind of deficiency, which most likely, very very likely, doesn't exist. And let's firstly talk about nutritional deficiency. And where does nutritional deficiency come from? I mean, it's something that's only really been recognised maybe in the last few hundred years, but it's been happening a long time and we just didn't know what it was. And the major nutritional deficiencies in human history are scurvy, um, very, very pellagra, um, night blindness, and... Uh, a couple of others, you could say rickets, vitamin D deficiency, um, B12 deficiency is a very minor issue, it's never really been a major problem. Uh, it was actually something only discovered when people, when doctors started to remove parts of people's stomachs and digestive system, all of a sudden people developed this deficiency <laughs> that no one had ever seen before. Uh, no one is, so it's a very modern thing and and then the suggestion is that vegans get B12 deficiency and therefore a lot of vegans believe they've got B12 deficiency unfortunately but anyway um, the all of these deficiencies were caused on a cooked food diet every single one of them people eating cooked food people eating starches uh, bread, grains, and all very little fruits and vegetables. Because if they had been eating fruits and vegetables, the healthiest foods for human beings, they would not have got any of these deficiencies. Um, very, uh, vitamin C, uh, scurvy, clearly, was solved by the sailors starting to have lemons and lemon lime uh, cordial and stuff like that that they would take on the, the ships. Um, berry, berry, pellagra. These were people living on polished rice and on corn who got these deficiencies. And there were, there were vitamin B deficiencies. And fruits and vi fruits are the best source of these, uh, of, of vitamins. So, and uh, vitamin B, they might not be the highest source, but they're the best source. Uh, night blindness is a vitamin A deficiency, which means a lack of uh, beta carotene, but there's maybe more to it because it just really happens in poor regions. But basically, and, and rickets is a vitamin D deficiency, but as long as you're not staying indoors all day long, all the time, never getting any sunlight, it's very hard for you to get rickets now. Um, and vitamin B12 deficiency, mm, like... Okay, there are people that have low B12 and they take the supplement B12 and everything. Uh, how often is deficiency really happening with symptoms? Probably pretty rarely. 
most people are aware of it and deal with it if they want to. A lot of people precautionary, precautionarily take it, take B12, so it's not really an issue in the vegan community or the raw vegan community. Uh, personally, I've never taken B12, and I uh, not not out of stubbornness or anything. I will be happy to take it. Maybe when maybe there'll be a time when I need to. But I I, I want to suggest to people that. You do not have to worry about deficiency when you start going raw or start going vegan. It's not something you need to worry about. When many people have been raw or vegan for many years without without worrying about it at all. So um, all these deficiencies, none of them are related to people eating fruit exclusively or, or fruit and vegetables exclusively. In fact, all of them were cured by people eating fruit or would be cured by people eating fruit technically, um, apart from vitamin D and B12. So you've, you've got this history of dietary deficiency which is nothing to do with a, a, a raw vegan or a fruit diet. Nothing to do with it. You know, there's never been a situation. But really the biggest dietary deficiency of human history is a deficiency of calories. That's the, <laughs> that is the deficiency that is the problem for people still all over in the world uh, and some people call that protein deficiency but it's really just a caloric deficiency uh, or at least if they were eating enough whole foods they would be eating enough protein as well even if it is a protein issue so it's not an issue of getting more protein rich foods but just eating more cal calories from whole foods so you've got these um, situations where the the real issue is, has been starvation and un, and uh, malnutrition from not having enough and, and that's led to some of these other deficiencies as well uh, not, just not having enough food um, and, and that's much more of a of an issue worldwide so carbohydrate um, is actually the major deficiency <laughs> and in the standard diet the major deficiency is carbohydrate and you would think, well, people eat sugar and things all day long, but they're not eating enough to maintain their health. And they're eating an excess of fat. So carbohydrate is actually the real deficiency that people need to worry about. And all of these deficiencies, none of them are really an issue with the fruit and veg diet, uh, the raw food diet. Um, but you could say vitamin D if you're, if you're in a, a place maybe like where I live. I don't supplement vitamin D. I've never got rickets. Maybe I could be healthier or feel better if I did supplement vitamin D. I don't know. I've never supplemented B12. But I'm not say, suggesting you do that. Um, I just don't think you should worry about it too much um, or be alarmed by it too much because it's, it's, it's not something that seems to develop very quickly if it, if it does develop at all. I don't know. So... The dietary deficiencies are not connected with a fruit or raw fruit diet. Is there any studies or scientific information suggesting that a raw food diet is uh, lacking? Well, if you go on Wikipedia and you look at the Wikipedia page on fruitarianism and raw food, raw vegan, you will find a lot of suggestions that raw vegans need to worry about all these different nutrients. And when you look at the links from that information, it's nonsense articles it's just nonsense information it's not science so uh, you can look at a, an article I wrote called why Wikipedia needs to change its fruitarianism article or something like that on the UK Fruit Fest website you can check that out and what I'm watching what I'm seeing there or what I'm watching there is just like ideas hypothesis um, they think that we should be low in this and that and the next thing, and none of us are. So it's, um, it's, it's, it's not worth worrying about uh, reading that Wikipedia article or whatever, because it's, not, it's all wrong. And then you get things like Ashton Kutcher coming out and saying that he did a fruitarian diet for like one day and, and he got pancreatitis or something. Um, which is just really silly. And... In fact, he was drinking a lot of carrot juice, so it wasn't even fruit. But anyway, regardless of that. So, that's a little breakdown, I think, of the history of 
if I say it's never been anything to do with fruit, it's actually been caused by not eating fruit and, and vegetables. Um, the people that are deficient in their diet, once again, because of a lack of fruits and vegetables, fruits and vegetables are, some, are one of the few foods that people are recommended to eat more of in their diet and you have to have a minimum amount to maintain your health and um, because they are such a vital source of nutrition the best source of nutrition for human beings and we've been marketed to this is the problem we've been marketed to propaganda eyed to um, lobbied to lied to about the requirement for all these different foods in your diet like fish for omega-3 and red meat for iron and milk for um, calcium and eggs for pro for complete proteins and this is all nonsense like this is all a complete myth uh, none of it has any uh, reality to it um, none of it's true you don't need any of these specific foods for any of those particular nutrients and you're better off getting all of those nutrients from different foods because all of those foods contain with them major health risks major health risks um, so they're not worth taking uh, at all and um, certainly not worth taking because you think it's nutritionally important to do so and protein is never a deficiency never has existed as a deficiency quashi or core all these things they, they claim it's a protein deficiency it's just a deficiency of calories but it's really a deficiency of carbohydrate because that's what the body is really looking for and when you get carbohydrate in the form of whole foods you will always if you get enough you'll always get enough protein um, because it's never we've never seen it to be any, uh, any otherwise the case we've never seen protein deficiency in the history of science in the history of medical science so it's been a mislabeled thing to call it protein deficiency just in case you were thinking why wasn't I talking about protein deficiency there so um, and why don't people talk about carbohydrate deficiency anyway uh, despite that there's still a lot of raw food people that will claim that people will fail on a raw food diet because of deficiency and that they will get a benefit by eating the reason that people eat animal products and get a benefit is because they were deficient in something um, this is once again totally unfounded um, never been no studies no research no no anything um, people trying to recreate ideas that sound good to them but never have we seen um, we've just not seen anything like that tested you do a raw food diet you get deficient all of a sudden you eat meat and all of a sudden you've got what you need and the, the problem with this is we don't know specifically what the person had a problem with and we don't know what eating the meat cured we don't have any information it's just random people saying things and the one thing we know for sure about people and food is people are completely delusional um, people that are very overweight can't understand why they're overweight they're like I don't barely eat anything and I'm so overweight like they're completely deluded about how much they eat and um, people that are anorexic obviously are deluded about what they're eating and how much they're eating and they think they're eating so much and all this stuff there's so much delusion when it comes to food and just outright lies and people like to cover up their little insecurities when it comes to food and people have strange like I'm pretty much a compulsive eater a lot of the time and so I have some weird habits related to even now still in a raw diet I might make a video about that but um, people have a lot of strange things that they do around food and when when scientists have done studies on diet one of the difficult things is getting people to be honest about their diet and really say what they have been eating what they have been doing and when people want to go and eat junk food they're going to find a reason to do it when people want to go and eat animal products they're going to find a reason to do it they're going to justify doing it um, and so deficiency is a way that they justify it it's not real I mean don't think that any of these people are actually telling the truth uh, far be it from them to be able to do that you know a lot of them just don't have the morals to, to care about telling the truth to be quite frank um, they don't really care about their audience or the people that are following them and um, like they just see all as maybe numbers and clicks and whatever ebook sales and whatever so I don't know why I keep complaining with this but it's kind of satisfying to me 
Um, but some people are claiming, you know, clients come to them, they recommend them to take some supplement and then the person gets better and, and it's so vague, so random. There's no evidence here. We, we have no idea. You can't just take someone's word for it. When someone says to you they're doing a raw food diet, you don't know what they're doing. Um, when someone says they feel better, you don't know what that means. That's, that could be just placebo effect. So in my opinion and history and what I've seen, I've never seen anyone fail on this diet because of a deficiency. And the only deficiency that people ever have in a raw vegan diet is they don't eat enough and that's basically it. They don't eat enough. They don't eat enough carbohydrate. They don't eat enough calories. Uh, but basically they don't eat enough carbohydrate and that makes you not feel good very quickly. If you don't eat enough, you will not feel good. If you don't eat enough carbohydrate and you eat too much fat, you will not eat, you not feel good. And friends of mine have said, well, I did the raw food diet for a while and then I started to go downhill a bit. And I'm like, yeah, but you were eating 20 avocados a day. You were having these massive salads with like a ton of sunflower seed butter yogurt in it every day like you're not going to feel good doing that you know um i mean that guy so nick avocado avocado like he was an example of that he used to eat 20 avocados as much as that a day and then he was saying you know he's not feeling good on a raw diet well obviously no one's telling you to eat 20 avocados um as i'm saying other friends massive amounts of whatever some kind of yogurt or some nut butter thing or some tahini thing or whatever and um, you're not going to feel good doing that i mean people in the junk food world they don't care they don't feel good and they just continue to eat the crap anyway but people on a raw diet have an expectation of feeling good so when they feel they're going downhill they're, they're not they're not happy about it um these are the things that i see people doing just not eating enough as, as well not eating enough carbohydrate doing juice cleanses, juice fasts, losing weight, um, wondering why you're not feeling good. Well, you can't feel good if you've not got enough calories. And you might make that sacrifice if you want to lose some weight, you know, or do a fast or something. You might make that sacrifice. You really shouldn't, though. Like, it's not worth feeling bad. If you want to lose weight, it takes time. You, you, you don't do it in the short term. Never, never try and do it quickly. Never, ever try and lose weight quickly. Never do a fast because you want to lose weight. Never, ever. And always, well, be honest with yourself. If you're thinking about doing a fast, is it because you want to lose weight? Be honest with yourself. If the answer is yes, don't do it. Fasting for disease, for major health issues. A lot of people say for spirituality and personal development. And they really mean because they want to lose weight. You know, so don't. Don't. So anyway, um, that's, these are the mistakes people make. Under eating, um, too much fat if they, do eat, if they do eat a lot. And a lot of them weren't even raw in the first place. That's the other thing. People that fell off a diet, they weren't raw in the first place. They're wondering, why am I not feeling good on a raw diet? Well, you weren't doing a raw diet. And that's what some people are naive enough when someone in a forum goes, I'm doing, doing this raw diet for three years and I don't feel good, they just believe that they're doing a raw diet. I don't believe them. I never believe anyone that tells me they're doing a raw diet. Or virtually I don't. Um, so I always ask, well, what is your diet? What are you eating? Is it always raw? Do you ever have cooked food? And then it starts to come out slowly. Well, once in a while I have this. What, what's once in a while? Eventually it's they eventually you find out they mean every day and eventually you realize they're not on a raw diet at all but other people are jumping on these people and, and telling them you need to take this supplement and that thing and this thing and they almost they never have a deficiency issue if they did they should be going to the doctor and not be writing in a forum because they're going to have some major symptoms not just like oh i'm feeling a bit down and a bit tired which to me is like they're under eating mm. or eating too much fat or something so or not sleeping enough or not or they're stressed in their life or their relationship so i'm going to do a, a webinar this week probably on thursday night and we're going to talk about 
the problems, the, the mistakes people make in a raw diet and what the real solutions are to being successful in a raw diet. And I'll also be launching this coaching program um, this week as well. Um, if you're looking for a more one-to-one -one help, then uh, that will be spoken about. But mostly what we're going to talk about is mistakes people are making on a raw diet, why they're having these issues, and how to correct that. So thank you very much for watching the video today. Don't worry about deficiency. You're way more likely to get a deficiency on one of the other crappy diets out there than on the best, than eating the healthiest food possible. So stay raw, be happy, and uh, we'll see you in the next video.